attention. So we think about warning signs. Um, and you know, Alzheimer Canada considers 10 warning signs for Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. And the one that most people think about first is uh, memory loss, but it's not the only one. There are many other things that can um, tell us that something's not quite right. And memory loss is different than forgetfulness. So you know, it's important to remember that Alzheimer's disease and dementias are not a normal part of aging. Not everyone develops a dementia with age. Rather, it is something that happens to some people. It, it's caused by a disease or a disorder. And Alzheimer's disease is one of the most common causes of dementia, but it's not the only one. And so we recognize that dementia is not a normal part of aging. And so if we're seeing signs with someone within ourselves, within a family member, within a colleague, a peer, um, we want to pay attention to them. So with memory loss, it's memory loss that affects daily functioning, that person's ability to get through their every day. So if, if we all forget things every single day, if I forget where I put my keys, which happens every now and again, especially now that I'm not driving very often, um, I, I often will retrace my steps. Where, where did I have them last? When did I last use them? But I've still maintained my ability to remember those pieces of the puzzle. And I still maintain my ability to drive my, my car once I find those keys. Whereas when we see it as a warning sign, it's less of that, it's not that forgetfulness, but rather it's actually that loss of memory. And where that loss is affecting someone's ability to get through their every day. So it's, it's really impacting their functional ability at home. We may also see um, difficulty performing familiar tasks. And this is, you know, something that a task that is really familiar that somebody has done every day with confidence, like use the coffee maker. And then one day they go to use it and they can't remember where the filter goes or where the water goes. So it's that familiar task that all of a sudden becomes difficult to do. Um, I had one client, I remember telling me um, his frustration with this early on in his disease process was opening his emails. And this was someone who in his professional world had used email every day. It was part of his work world. And with the development of his dementia, he was finding that he couldn't navigate that email in the same way. And that frustrated him because he knew that it was, it was because of the dementia that he was having problems with that. So it's difficult to performing something familiar. And we may see somebody who has problems with language. Now we all have that tip of the tongue thing that happens to us every now and again. You're in a conversation, you're trying to remember something and you lose that one word that you're looking for, but it drops in or it happens once in a while. But with dementia, we see that that ability for someone um, sometimes to word find impacts them in every sentence or their conversations become impacted because of that inability. And so it's more than happening just once in a blue moon, like it does for um, someone else. Whereas with dementia and as a warning sign, we see it happening more and more frequently. And we may see a disorientation of time and space. You know, our, our brains hold that internal clock in terms of how much time has passed. And so, you know, if I say to you, I'll be back in 10 minutes, you have a sense as to how much time that is. And if I'm not back in, 30 minutes, your internal clock is going to say, hey, something's gone here. But if that internal clock is damaged, then that person may not have that same orientation to time. Knowing how much time has passed may be impacted. But also a disorientation of space. So even in their own, in their own uh, familiar house or at the lodge, you know, a place that they know very well, becoming disoriented. You know, they walk down one hallway and, and that person might get turned around and not know which way is the exit, you know, because it's, it's that, that part of the brain might be impacted by that. We may see somebody who has uh, an impaired judgment. So our judgment center is within our brain. And so that may be damaged as well. So in this really, really cold day today, um, as we're, you and I are talking, it's, 
you think about someone who might be showing impaired judgment by not wearing the appropriate clothing when they go outside. Um, and so not having that, that same judgment within their brain to be able to kind of rationally think of the situation. And then we see, you know, problems with abstract thinking. Things become very concrete for somebody who has this damage in their brain. And so doing things that are abstract becomes difficult. Um, math is an example of an abstract thing, right? Um, adding up um, numbers in a column, you know, things like that. Um, balancing a checkbook, which a lot of people don't do anymore, but that skill is very abstract. Um, being able to do that, that becomes challenging for somebody with, with a dementia. We may see somebody who's misplacing things. So, um, you know, I, we all misplace things once in a while, but typically, again, um, like I said, with my keys, we can retrace them. Um, but that person with dementia may be putting things in a really odd place, like the keys are in the sugar bowl or the CDs are in the freezer. Um, and then they can't do that retracing in the same way. And then we see uh, changes in mood and behavior and personality and loss of initiative. And, and these three warning signs, again, there's, there's often a misperception that everyone who develops a dementia is going to be angry and physically or, or verbally aggressive. And that's not true. Uh, what shifts is their ability to express those emotions. And so that may be something that we see in terms of changes in behavior or changes in personality. Somebody who's always very outgoing is now more withdrawn or vice versa. So, so those are all 10 warning signs that we kind of think about and, and encouraging people that if you're seeing the, any of these warning signs in yourself, in a family member, in a friend, in a lodge member, that you take them seriously because it's something isn't quite right. And it's important to speak with a primary health professional in that state. The best place to go is with your own primary care. So is it your physician? Is it a nurse practitioner? Um, whoever it is that, that you see regarding your health, making that appointment and having that conversation. It doesn't have to be Alzheimer's disease. It could be something else, but it's not normal. And so it's important that we address it or that's addressed and taken seriously.